Hello everyone and welcome back to The Little Quilter. Today we're going to be continuing our work on, I'll show you the front, the produce section quilt by Elizabeth Hartman. Again, this is my block of the month and we're on month three. And this month I've already completed the cherries and we're going to be working on this apple right here. So we've got to make four apple blocks and I've done all of my cutting already and we're going to be using some more of the, as I like to call it, um, the George Jetson fabric here. I just, it really reminds me of that. So uh, we're gonna be using some more of this to make our apples. So let's jump into getting this done. Here we go. Okay, so what you guys may have noticed is that my new technique for getting a lot of this done is sewing all of the pieces that I can directly together, even if they're not in order. So I do have to really pay attention um, because obviously a lot of Elizabeth Hartman stuff is very orientation directed. And so example being like, these are easy to put together because obviously, you know, I can adjust that for for that. But these, on the other hand, you know, if I had messed up putting them in a direction, then this whole piece would have been messed up. But I didn't. Um, actually, maybe I should knock on like wood or something. I haven't messed anything up yet. So it just helps to keep things going a little bit faster for myself to finish these blocks a little bit faster but it does mean that I have to pay attention. And Elizabeth Hartman's quilting instructions, I mean, they really are just gorgeous, you know, in that they are extremely detailed with the steps and everything and how to do it. And so it's one of those things that her books are great. And honestly, you shouldn't make a mistake with an Elizabeth Hartman quilt, but I do very routinely. And most of the time, that's just because I'm not paying attention. So if I pay attention and I do things sequentially, you know, it I can get it done, but it takes longer. Whereas if I can pay attention and just sew things that need to go together and then fit them together in that manner, it seems to work pretty well. So that's what I'm trying. We'll see how it works out. So I've had some people mention that they really liked that I did my seams open like this. And I do. I like doing that. I used to never do that. I would always have pressed this to the dark side. Um, but now I really like doing that. Now, there are times when I change that. So in this one, it makes more sense to me. And I think it will lay flatter if rather than pressing this seam open like this which is not terrible for this but here you've got this seam coming you're backtracking over it I just feel like it's a lot thicker there than just pressing it this way and um and it's the way the fabric wants to go anyways so when I have a really bulky seam sometimes I do look at it and and decide do I actually need to press this open or would it be a better idea to just press it like this because I think it ends up being a lot more flat um, which is the main goal of all of this you know it's not really about choosing a side or a specific thing it's more about how does this lay how is it going to actually think these go this way how does it, how flat can we make it? Because the flatter that we can make it, the better that it's gonna be in the end, right? And the easier it's gonna be when we quilt it, if we can get it so flat.
there is the top of the apples done. Now, the other thing that I wanted to show you guys, because everybody also, sometimes for, I feel like they say my piecing is really good. And I have a really hard time when we're doing really small pieces like this. So you can see that this is not really straight. I mean, they're just not. And it's okay. I'm going to trim these up. Like, oh gosh, this one's really terrible, isn't it? But I think it'll be okay. I'm going to trim them up and I think that will help to do this. And all of this, some of this is from pressing um, and some of it is like these little pieces. I think some of these were cut a little bit smaller. Cutting really tiny pieces is difficult for me. And I have wonderful, wonderful tools. You know, I have the quilt in a day, 12 and a half inch quilt ruler. You know, I have two different types of rulers like this to cut and, but it's just really hard. So I think one of the things to help with this is really making sure that your fabric is starched um, because that's something that I didn't do as well this time around. Um, I was just trying to go pretty fast. So making sure your fabric starched so that it holds its shape better would be really good. And then the other thing is it's really hard to pin little stuff like this. So just being very attentive when you're sewing something like this that it's staying lined up. I, it, it's not the end of the world for me and I think they will look better after I after I square them up. So I'm going to do that. And Okay, so these are them squared up and they're a little bit better. It's not as bad. I'm still off a little bit. This one's probably the worst one and um, we'll just have to watch when we're sewing on an edge here that we get it. But the other ones really aren't terrible, so I think they'll be okay. It also helps once we did that that this line is not quite as straight. It's not as noticeable, but it is. However, apples in real life aren't perfect, so, you know, we could just say we sliced that apple a little bit differently at a different angle. It'll be fine. And I did not, you may have noticed, I did not square up the length of these and the reason for that is they're all really really close I'm not gonna waste a bunch of time shearing off you know just slivers of fabric um, and they're not really super frayed if they get and if it gets really frayed or tattered then I think that's nice to clean it up but in this instance I'm not gonna do that Okay, so we're just doing another level of the apple and so this is going to make those rounded corners and just one of the things that you have to pay attention with in Elizabeth Hartman quilts is that the next piecing is putting on two different size blocks okay to this so a making sure that the block sizes that you choose are in the appropriate spot and the right size. And then the other thing is these are all diagonal lines. So you can see I've already done one here where I've done this diagonal. And I think this is the hardest part for most people with Elizabeth Hartman quilts, other than doing like little fiddly bits where they're really, really small. But the things that I do to help myself with this is I have my diagonal seam tape, um, which I have lined up as best as I can and order to know where that quarter inch line is. The hardest part for diagonal seam tape for me, and maybe I could make this better if I would just actually take this tape off and scooch it over, but the quarter inch seam for me is actually putting my fabric, here I'll show you, so basically taking my fabric and it's sitting right on top of that line. That is going to be a quarter inch seam, and so as you might imagine it's a it's a little bit hard to see that when you're sewing. It's not terrible. I always want to do it like this so that I can see the line. And so it probably would be smart if I just moved it over some, but I haven't done that because 
so you don't have to take it over and measure it. And it's so much easier to measure it with this line right here. The other thing that I've done is I've got this quarter inch sewing foot. And so it's got this quarter inch line right here. And that's going to tell me as I'm sewing that I'm a quarter of an inch away. And that really works well for just the traditional piecing um, that you're wanting to do, but not really great for when you're doing a diagonal seam because when you do a diagonal seam, there is really not a quarter inch line here. You're just going from one edge to the other. I don't think they're terrible, but I do think it's something that you have to pay attention with with her quilts because I've done a few of them now and all of them have diagonal piecing to them and they all have fiddly bits to it as well. And it's a challenge, but it is not... It's, it's not something that I would say, don't do one of her quilts. I would actually say, do one of her quilts. Challenge yourself and get better because you will get better. The more that you do, the better that you will get. And no, it's not perfect every time, but nothing in life is perfect, right? So no apple that I cut is going to look exactly the same. So it doesn't bother me that these are not exactly the same. I guess if I was a perfectionist, it would. But to me, a done quilt is a better quilt than one that's in pieces on the floor. Okay, and also one of the other things that I wanted to talk with you guys about, because I mentioned that quarter inch seam foot, and I like using that one because it doesn't have a bumper. So here's another quarter inch seam foot, and you can see that it has this bumper right here, which is great if you're doing traditional piecing because your piece of fabric can just sit right adjacent to it and you don't have to worry about, you know, are you staying right on line with the diagonal seam tape? Are you staying right on line with that quarter inch piece, that quarter inch piece of the foot? This really takes care of it for you because it sticks out and holds your fabric there. This is terrible for diagonal seams because you actually do want your fabric to go under this. And so I don't recommend using this foot for a Elizabeth Hartman quilt. It will just frustrate you in all honesty. For some of the piecing, it would be great. You know, for, for this piecing right here where we're piecing the stem onto the background fabric, it would be great because it's gonna keep my fabric nice and straight. But for anything that requires a diagonal seam, such as this, it's not gonna be great because you are not gonna have that fabric sitting against it. So if you're looking at quarter inch seams, yes, I think this foot's a great foot, but not a great foot for Elizabeth Hartman quilt. So don't buy that one if you're trying to buy a quarter inch foot and see this and go, ooh, that one looks really cool. I think it's cool, I would recommend having it. It's a nice tool to have in your box, but not for this type of quilt. All right, so like a whole bunch of diagonal seams later, we've got this bit and I will show you guys, I've got everything laid out. So we are ready to put this whole piece together. We've got all of the big pieces done. And so this should go together pretty quickly. And then we'll have our apple block done. Everybody, I have finished them. So I have got four George Jetson apple blocks here. I think this is one of the best ones. They're all about um, like an eighth of an inch short all the way around, but they're consistent. And so I think that's the most important part is just the consistency of it. So they all ended up looking 
really, really good. I'll show you. So I think that this is one of the best blocks. And this one's probably the worst block. So you can see this. Oh, hold on. There's a string. There we go. So you can see it's a little wonky right in here in this. But again, that's that little piecing and I'm just not that great at it. So that's okay. I love them though. I think they're really cute and you can tell they look like apples, which is always a good start. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. Um, this is the end of month three of this block of the month, the produce section by Elizabeth Hartman. I've got it linked down below if you want to buy just the quilt pattern or I have the website where I purchased my block of the month. I'm sure they have quilt kits or I'm sure you can get quilt kits quilt kit somewhere. Um, but as always, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned. I think this coming week we'll be finishing up the red sampler quilt, so I'm really excited about that. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks.